What if the term international community is not as inclusive as it sounds? Let's pause and ponder for a moment. Could it be possible that this term carries an implicit bias? A projection perhaps of Western ideals and expectations onto countries with different histories, cultures and systems of governance? A way for the West to subtly enforce its norms, its standards, onto the rest of the world? This video explores the historical context of the term and its usage in the present day. The term, international community, has a complex past. The concept, as we understand it today, is deeply intertwined with the historical narrative of Western imperialism. This narrative has left a profound impact on the collective consciousness of nations worldwide, shaping their perceptions and interpretations of the international community. Western imperialism, which began in earnest in the 15th century, was a period marked by the expansion of Western European countries across the globe. This expansion was driven by a desire for wealth and power, and was often enforced through military might. The West's dominance extended not only over territories, but also over the narratives about these territories, effectively influencing how they were perceived and understood. In addition to military force, the West also wielded another powerful weapon, media propaganda. Western media has long been a tool for disseminating the Western narrative, often portraying the West as the standard bearer of progress in civilization. This narrative has been so pervasive that it has become a part of the global understanding of what constitutes the international community. But the term international community is not just about the past. It is also about how the West continues to influence the world today. Through institutions like the United Nations and the World Bank, Western countries have been able to exert significant influence over global politics and economics. Moreover, the West has continued to use media as a tool for shaping narratives, often dictating the discourse on international affairs. This influence is not always overt, sometimes it's about tacit approval or disapproval, subtly guiding the actions of other countries. It's about creating an echo chamber where Western views are amplified, reinforcing the notion that the international community aligns with Western values and perspectives. So when we talk about the international community, we are not just talking about a group of nations. We are also talking about a narrative that has been shaped and continues to be influenced by Western imperialism. The influence of the West on the world stage has been significant and continues to shape the concept of the international community. The international community of the 21st century is a product of Western influence. This statement opens the door to the realities of our modern world, where the power dynamics of the global stage are often skewed towards the West. In today's geopolitics the term international community is often used to refer to a global consensus, yet more often than not, it tends to reflect the Western perspective and Western interests, rather than a genuine global consensus. This is not a coincidence or an accident but rather, it is a deliberate projection of Western influence on the rest of the world. Several Western-established international institutions such as the United Nations, the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund exert significant influence on the global stage. These institutions, while professing to represent global interests, often pressure non-Western countries to adopt Western-style democracy. The underlying assumption here is that the Western model of democracy is the most viable and the most desirable model for all countries to follow. However, this assumption is not universally accepted. Many non-Western countries have unique cultural, historical, and societal contexts that may not align with the Western model of governance. Yet the pressure to conform to Western standards of democracy continues, often in the guise of promoting human rights, economic development, and global solidarity. Now, let's turn our attention to the role of media in shaping the international community. Today, Western media has a far-reaching influence that extends well beyond the Western world. From Hollywood films to global news networks, Western narratives dominate the media landscape in many non-Western countries. This widespread presence of Western media serves to amplify Western propaganda, reinforcing Western ideals and interests. For instance, when a non-Western country makes a stand against Western imperialism, it often faces a barrage of negative coverage in the Western media. This negative coverage, when echoed in the media landscape of the non-Western country, creates a perception of isolation, both domestically and internationally. The West's ability to control the narrative and create an echo chamber of its ideals is a powerful tool in shaping the international community. It is through this control of perception that the West attempts to isolate countries that resist its influence and, 
in turn, reinforces the illusion of a unified, international community that aligns with Western interests. In essence, the term, international community, as used in the modern context, is more reflective of Western interests and ideals than a true global consensus. It represents a projection of Western influence onto non-Western countries, often backed by the threat of military force and amplified by Western media propaganda. The West's ability to control perception and create an echo chamber of its ideals is a powerful tool in shaping the international community. This reality underscores the need for a more balanced and inclusive understanding of the international community, one that truly represents the diverse interests and perspectives of all nations, not just those of the West. The term, international community might be more illusion than reality. Stripped to its basics, this concept is driven by a manufactured consent and consensus. It's a term that's been shaped and molded by Western ideology and influence, and it's used as a powerful tool in the geopolitical arena. Now let's break this down. When we say manufactured consent, we're talking about a process where the opinions of the masses are shaped by a dominant narrative. This narrative, more often than not, is controlled by Western powers with a vested interest in maintaining the status quo. The international community as we know it is formed based on this narrative, and any dissenting voices are often drowned out in the noise. But this isn't just about controlling the narrative, it's also about isolating those who dare to stand against Western imperialism. By projecting an image of unity and consensus, Western powers can create an illusion of credibility. They can portray those who oppose them as outliers, as threats to this imagined community. This illusion is further amplified by the Western media's echo chamber. The voices of opposition are not only marginalized but they're also demonized. The Western media has the power to shape perceptions, to paint countries in a negative light if they dare to challenge the established order. This isn't just about silencing dissent, it's about controlling how the world sees these dissenting voices. And let's not forget the pressure from Western-established international institutions. Countries are pushed to democratize, to open up their media landscape to foreign, particularly Western, influence. This only serves to reinforce the Western narrative, to amplify its propaganda, and to further isolate those who resist. In essence, the international community isn't a true reflection of the world's diverse voices and perspectives. Instead, it's a term that's been co-opted by Western powers to serve their interests, to maintain their control, and to justify their actions on the global stage. The international community, as it is understood today, is largely a product of Western influence and control. The international community is a term that warrants deep reflection and understanding. As we've journeyed through this discourse, we've shed light on the historical context and present-day realities that shape this term and its implications. We've delved into the origins of the term, its evolution over time, and its current relevance in a world that is increasingly interconnected yet divided. The term, international community as we've seen, is not a universally agreed-upon concept. It is a projection, primarily by Western nations, onto non-Western countries. This projection is not without its implications, it is often used as a tool to isolate countries that stand against Western imperialism, creating an echo chamber that amplifies Western narratives and ideologies. Historically, we've seen the threat of military force and the pervasive influence of Western media propaganda play significant roles in shaping this term. These elements have time and again been used to coerce countries into aligning with Western ideals, often under the guise of democratization. The presence of free and foreign media, particularly Western media, in non-Western countries, has further reinforced this echo chamber, lending credibility to the term international community. In the present day, this trend continues. The pressure exerted by Western-established international institutions on non-Western countries to democratize, to adopt Western ideals, and to allow the infiltration of Western media, continues to shape the narrative around the international community. This narrative, in turn, influences our perception of countries that dare to resist this Western hegemony. But here's the catch. The term international community is based on manufactured consent and consensus. It's an illusion, a mirage that appears credible due to the amplification of Western propaganda. It is not a reflection of a true, diverse, and inclusive global community. Rather, it is a reflection of the power dynamics at play in our world, a testament to the influence of Western imperialism. As we navigate the complexities of our globalized world, it is crucial to understand the power dynamics at play in terms we often take for granted, like the international community. 
let's challenge ourselves to question, to understand, and to critically evaluate the narratives we are presented with, because only then can we hope to dismantle the echo chambers, to break free from the illusions, and to foster a truly inclusive and equitable global community. If you enjoyed this video please like share and comment, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.